Good morning, my name is William Borna. I've been holding this testimony since July of 2000. When I flatlined, I died of a heart attack. When I died of a heart attack, I'll give you the story now. I did go to hell and I was tortured. I've been holding this testimony for 16 and a half years. It's just not something that I really wanted to talk about. This is where it began. Since I was 15 years old, all I liked was to party and women. That was it. How many women? can I sleep with and how much partying can I do? I'm 50 years old. I was a teenager in the early 80s in Miami when the money was flowing. When the money dried up, it was time to go look for a job. I would go from place to place looking for a job I could never find one. Something in my heart was just saying, get on your knees and pray to God. Didn't know how to do it. Didn't even know who Jesus was. But I'd walk into a church and I said, do you mind if I get on my knees? I need to ask God for a job. Yeah, sure. What little belief that I had that there was a God and I would get on my knees and pray and two or three days later, I'd have a job. And I would look up at heaven and I'd say thank you and that was the last time God that I didn't know would hear from me because I didn't know him. I always believed that there was a God just like everybody does. Even the atheists believe that there's a God. They're just lying. Two, three years pass. I either quit my job or get fired and it's time to look for another one. There I go again. I already knew the secret. Just go to the first church you could find. Don't matter where it's at. Don't matter what denomination. Just walk inside and I'd ask for a job. God, can you give me a job, please? Two or three days later, I'd have another job. And that whole time, I was just partying and women. That was just my main concern. It was nothing else. I would hear a little voice that would try to talk to me. And it was God. He would said, son, I need you to work for me. I didn't know who God was. I just heard the voice saying, I need you to work for me. I knew it was him. I knew it was God, the God that I didn't know. I didn't even know his son's name was Jesus. And I used to tell him, God, I respect you. I know you're for real. Every time I ask you for a job, you give me one. But I like my women. I like South Beach. This is my home, South Beach. This is where I like to party. Leave me on this side, and you stay on that side. That was it. That was it. The 1996 was the last time I asked him for a job. I needed a job. This was three times. I go back to a church. I used to go in and out of jobs. And I'd go back to just a church in 1996 and I asked God to help me out. Please give me a job. Within three days he gave me a job. Again, for the third time. And from 96 to 2000, I kept hearing that voice, son, I want you to come work for me. And I kept saying the same thing to him. Same exact thing, I was a recording machine. Let me stay on the left side. I like South Beach, I like partying, and I like my women. In the year 2000, 
is when I died of a heart attack. I'm going to explain it to you as I'm on my knees right now in front of God. This is the prayer room in my house. This is where I bend my knees daily. This is where the beginning of wisdom is the sphere of the Lord. In the year 2000, I flatlined. I had a heart attack. Have you ever seen someone have a heart attack? They just fall. They, they, their, their whole body falls. Unfortunately, I fell on my face. Why am I doing it in the prayer room? Because the day I died, we have a spirit that's inside of us. We have a body that's it. I'm sorry. We have a spirit. We have a soul. And we have a body. This body died, fell on the floor, dead. The maggots will eat it up once you die. That spirit never dies. So, when I flatlined, I'm going to start my story right now exactly, exactly the way it was. If you ever watched a movie called Ghost with Patrick Swayze, and Deneen Moore, there was a thug looking kind of guy with a fro. He was a Latin guy. That's what I could tell you. Lark, okay? And he was the one that was going to kill Deneen Moore. And if I'm correct, no, I don't know if he killed Patrick Swayze. No. You know who I'm talking about. The Latin guy in Ghost. He got hit by a car. When he died, those little black moles came to get him in the movie. That is exactly what happened to me. Whoever did that movie knew exactly what they were talking about. Those little black moles came to get me. My body is dead on the floor. All I could remember is that they were grabbing my feet and they were bringing me down. There was many of them. While they were bringing me down, my body's on the floor. My spirit and soul is coming. I'm alive now. I'm awake. Now I have another body because I'm feeling pain. They were sticking their fingers in my eyes. They were sticking their fingers in my nose. They were biting my ear. They were gouging me. They were spitting on me. They were cursing me. I couldn't even cry. I was just being tortured. It was just so much pain. Nothing could come out. I was crying with inside. Never knew God, never knew Jesus. I went to a place that had a drop off point and these big black gates started opening up. And when I mean a drop-off point is, imagine if you're on the second floor of a building and you look down, that's the drop-off point. All I could see is from what I could see with my eyes and as far as I couldn't see no more. It was like an ocean of people screaming and crying. And all I could hear is, get me out of here, please. Please get me out of here. I never knew what a pastor was. I never knew what a man of God was. That wasn't in my vocabulary. I didn't even know God. I just believed that God exists. So when these gates, which are the gates of hell, I learned later on in the book of Revelation, it talks about the gates of hell. These things that were biting me and torturing me were going to push me, push me into that pit. Before they could push me, I got to see a good minute. And I got to look down. Like I said, I never knew what a pastor was. But there was a whole section of them. And all I could hear them keep saying is, I'm sorry I took the money. I'm sorry I took the money. I'm sorry I took the money. Then I could just hear people screaming. I was more in pain of the torture that they were torturing me, but he let me see that pit. Right before they were about to throw me, I was getting right to the edge of the pit. 
I cried out, just like I used to cry out for a job. I cried out and I said, God, just kill me. I know I belong here, but don't let me suffer like those people. My cry to God was for him to kill me so I wouldn't suffer. Your spirit will never die. It will last forever, infinity times infinity times infinity times infinity. I'm here on my knees telling you the truth that there is a hell. I was tortured. When I cried out, God, just kill me. I belong here. That was my cry. Just don't let me suffer like those people down there. From the back, you could see that wall back there, okay? From the back, all that was coming forth was light, light. Everything lit up. As the light lit up, then the people down there were screaming, please forgive me, please, please forgive me, please, please, I'm sorry I took the money, please. The screams were getting so loud. I didn't know what was going on. All I could see was a light, a light. Remember, the light's coming from behind me. All I could see is a light beaming that way. And then I hear a thundering voice. You need help. You need help. It shook, it shook hell. That's how loud. And at that very moment, I was gone from there. The Lord put me back. Didn't even know it was the Lord. Didn't even, didn't even know that word. Put me back into my body. And he lifted me in the air, airborne. Now my feet are not on the ground. <clears throat> Excuse me. My spirit is back in my body. And then in the air, he threw me against the wall where my bed was. So when I hit that wall, I fell down on the bed. I woke up the next morning, never looked at myself in the mirror. I just woke up and all I could remember was hell, being tortured. Like I said, I never, ever, ever knew what a pastor was. I didn't even, I, if you asked me, I couldn't even tell you. I could remember many of them screaming, I'm sorry, I took the money. And then that voice, I kept hearing it over and over. You need help. So the first thing I did was just call 411. And, and it was early in the morning. I go, is there an Alcoholic Anonymous uh, meeting? Is there a drug meeting? Yes, there's one that starts at nine o'clock. This was on a Sunday. So I went to Coral Gables, Florida to a school. I think it was Coral Gables High School or something. They had meetings in there somewhere in Coral Gables. And I sat there in that meeting. This is in July of the year 2000. And I got there for the first meeting at nine o'clock. Never said a word to no one, just sat down there. Didn't hear one thing one person said, just sat there, I was a zombie. I remember some guy tapping me on the shoulder and he said, sir, it's time to go. And I looked at him and he said, sir, it's time to go. And I couldn't speak it, I said, I just got here. He said, sir, you've been here since nine o'clock in the morning. It's 10 o'clock at night. You've sat through about five or six different meetings. You haven't moved, nobody's. Excuse me, sir. You haven't moved. Hell is for real. I was tortured in hell. I still ran from God. 
when I came back, but I wanted to know who God was. I wanted to know who God was. So I went to the people at my job and there was this guy I used to call a Bible bagger that I would laugh at. And he said to me, I said to him, what happened that I died, that I went to hell, that I was tortured? I wanna know, I wanna know why God saved my life. I just had to know. I knew it was God, I just wanted to know why. I didn't know that it's because he loved me. I didn't even know that. I couldn't even fathom that. I could not think in my mind that God loved me so much that he saved my life. I didn't even know why. He said, dude, that's all the drugs that you did. That's all the alcohol. I can't help you. I made fun of that man. I tortured him. I used to laugh at him every single day, so I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Then I kept searching, so then I went to a booth, went to a Catholic church, and I just said, if I confess my sins, maybe he'll tell me why. So I went in the booth and I couldn't stop crying. I was weeping like a baby, weeping, just crying. And the man in the booth said, there's a long line behind you. Would you come back later? I couldn't stop crying. It made sense. As, as bad as that sounded, it made sense because I couldn't stop crying. I cried for two weeks straight every day. I would go to work crying. And people at work just said, don't even talk to him. Don't even, that dude, don't even talk to him. I would go to work crying. I would grab my paperwork to do my job and I would cry for 12 hours. Then I'd go home and sleep and then I'd cry again for another 12 hours awake going to work. And I did that for two weeks straight. I've been working for the Lord Jesus Christ since the year 2000, since the day I gave my life up to Jesus. I've been holding this testimony for 16 and a half years. I worked for him for seven years straight. He used me as a vessel to plant five churches. And then I planted a school for him. And at that time, when I planted the school, somebody did me wrong. And I was tired. And I backslid. And I walked away from God for seven years. And when I walked away from God for seven years, I went back to womenizing. And I went back to partying. I went back right where I left off. I went back to God just to pray to him one time. And I said, God, can you take away these pills that I'm taking? I'm taking about 10 a day. God, please. Could you take away the perverted mind that I have with all these women, please? After seven years, I just wanted for him to pray. I just wanted to pray for him to take away the pills and this perverted mind that I had. He's such a good God. He did that. But little did I know he was going to ask me to come back to work for him. And this is his exact word. He says, son, I'm glad you came to pray to me because I was just about to take your life. He loved me so much that he took me back. A 
going to change this testimony right now. I'm going to speak directly to the pastors out there. There's a lot of them out there. I want to run a church for money or they're taking money from the church. It's not worth it. I saw with my own eyes men being tortured. And to those of you listening out there, there's good churches that preach the word of God. God will hold you responsible because you're going to say, well, I'm not going to go to church because they just take the money. You know what? You will be held responsible for not following Jesus. I don't have much more to say. All I can tell you is God is real. The devil will not bother you if you're doing wrong. The day you get on your knees like I am right now and say, Lord Jesus, I need help. And then start opening the Bible. I want to show you something. I'm going to bring it as close as I can. That's where they were throwing me in right there. I had that. Somebody drew a picture of that. That's where they were throwing me in right there. That is for real. There's a lot of good people in hell that didn't do nothing wrong to nobody, but they did not accept Jesus. Bad people go to heaven because they accept Jesus. Good people go to hell because they don't accept Jesus. Every day I'm on my knees because I fear God. I learn more and more about him daily because I study the word of God two hours a day. That's minimum. Forgive me, Lord, for lying. I study about five or six hours a day. You can't know who God is unless you open up the Bible. All I can tell you is God is for real. He loves you. All he wants you to do is say, forgive me, Lord, for my sins. I am a sinner. Receive Jesus as your savior. Find a good church. You know what? I'm going to be honest with you. You're going to have to go to 10, maybe 20 churches till you find a good one because 19 of them out there are teaching watered down Jesus 19 of them are more concerned about filling up their chairs and I'll be honest with you open your Bible and start in the New Testament in the book of John get on your knees receive Jesus and then say, Holy Spirit of God, you are my teacher. And if you stay in front of that Bible for two hours a day and start in the book of men, you should say, Holy Spirit of God, you are my teacher, teach me. He will teach you better than any preacher behind a pulpit. You'll fall in love with the Bible. The beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. You got to get on your knees. Father God, I know you're for real. Forgive me for my sins. Have mercy on my soul. He is an awesome God. I love you. My name is William Bourne. And I'm giving you my first and last name. If you ever need to talk to me, call me. Three, zero, five, four, zero, seven. 6464. Four. That's if you need prayer. That's if you need to talk to me about Jesus. For those of you that don't know Jesus and you just want to call me to make fun of me or, or crank call me, what you sow is what you will reap. Don't play with God, don't mock God. If you start calling 
and saying you're a fool and all that, you're not saying it to me. Okay, this testimony is about God and it's about your life and it's about hell. So he is the author of this book right here that you're hearing. I love you. God is for real. I love you.